The Auditor General provides assurance to Parliament on the accountability and performance of the Victorian public sector. The Auditor General conducts financial audits and performance audits and reports on the results of these audits to Parliament. On the 6th of August 2014, the Auditor General tabled his financial audit report, Technical and Further Education Institutes, results of the 2013 audits. This report covers the results of the 2013 financial audits of 27 entities, comprising 14 Technical and Further Education Institutes, or TAFEs, and the 13 entities they control. Historically, the results of TAFEs and universities were presented in one report. However, due to significant changes in recent years, these two sectors are operating in increasingly disparate environments. So for the first time, the results are presented in separate reports to provide the reader with greater clarity about the performance of both sectors. The results of universities' audits was tabled in May 2014. The overall conclusion of the audit was that the TAFE sector generated a net deficit of $16.2 million in 2013, a decrease of $74.8 million from the $58.6 million surplus in 2012. The results were affected by decreased government funding, which was partially offset by an increase in student fee revenue and reduced costs. The results suggest that many TAFEs have yet to adapt to changes to the funding model and the new contestable environment. Clear audit opinions were issued on the financial reports of the 27 TAFE entities. Clear audit opinions are positive written expressions provided when the financial report has been prepared and presents fairly the transactions and balances for the reporting period in accordance with the requirements of the relevant legislation and Australian accounting standards. However, an emphasis of matter paragraph was included in the financial report of Northern Melbourne Institute of Technology, drawing attention to a material uncertainty in its ability to continue as a going concern. Monthly financial reporting and security over sensitive information were assessed as the strongest financial reporting practices. However, the quality of some elements of financial reporting deteriorated in 2013, with scope for improvement relating to preparing shell financial statements, financial compliance reviews, analytical reviews and materiality assessments. Opportunities for improvement have been reported over a number of years and some TAFEs have not acted on recommendations. In our future reports to Parliament, we intend to name entities that do not take appropriate steps to improve their financial report preparation processes. Clear audit opinions were issued on all 19 performance reports for 2013. However, the TAFE sector did not have a framework that mandated relevant and appropriate key performance indicators. Accordingly, the sector's performance reporting was underdeveloped and inconsistent, lacked clear direction and did not facilitate comparability across the sector. From 2014, TAFEs are to implement a strategic planning framework, requiring them to set key performance indicators clearly linked to their key strategies. However, the framework does not establish a core suite of indicators against which TAFEs are to report. Without the ability to compare performance across the sector and between entities, the value of performance reporting is diminished. The 14 TAFEs produced a net deficit of $16.2 million, a decrease of $74.8 million from the $58.6 million surplus generated in 2012. Ten TAFEs reported a reduced financial result in 2013, with seven reporting an operating deficit compared with four in 2012. These results were affected by a decrease of $116.3 million in government grants, which was partially offset by a reduction in costs and an increase in student fee revenue. Against the trend, four TAFEs reported a surplus and an improved financial performance. These were Chisholm, Goulburn Ovens, Kangan and Sunraysia. Effective initiatives introduced at these TAFEs, such as increasing the level of courses provided through third parties, changed course offerings, staff redundancies and reduced operating costs, have made them more viable and this is a positive start. Overall, the results suggest that many TAFEs have yet to respond effectively to changes to the funding model and contestability arrangements. NMIT, 
reported a net operating deficit of $31.7 million and in the absence of remedial action, projected substantial cash flow deficits for the next two years. As a result, the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development, or DEECD, has agreed to support NMIT in securing a two-year interest-free government bridging loan of $16 million to assist with proposed restructuring arrangements. Following changes to the board and executive team, NMIT has identified and commenced the implementation of various operational initiatives to improve their cash flows for 2014. Despite these actions, NMIT has been flagged as a high financial sustainability risk in this report. The significant decline in TAFE's operating results in 2013 has resulted in a deterioration in the overall financial sustainability of the sector. Five TAFEs were assessed as being high risk in 2013. These are Advance, Central Gippsland, Northern Melbourne, Southwest and William Anglis. This means that there are immediate or short-term financial challenges at these TAFEs that need to be addressed. A further eight TAFEs were assessed as medium risk. Ten TAFEs recorded poorer results in 2013, with seven recording deficits and poor underlying result indicators. All 14 TAFEs had low liquidity risk. 11 TAFEs had a high self-financing risk, meaning they would have difficulty in funding asset replacement from their own sourced funds. Debt to equity for all TAFEs remained at low risk, with 10 TAFEs having no debt at all. Total debt for the sector, at around $17 million, remains low compared to equity. While more flexible financing arrangements now open to TAFEs provide opportunities, they should be cautious and assess their ability to repay financing costs, especially if operating results continue to deteriorate. The capital replacement position has deteriorated significantly since 2011. 11 TAFEs now have a risk assessment of medium or high. This means their ability to fund asset replacement is restricted and as a consequence, the condition of TAFE assets may start to deteriorate. We also reviewed internal controls at each of the TAFEs, in particular focusing on procurement activities and financial policies and delegations. Controls over procurement across the TAFE sector were generally adequate and complied with government requirements. However, improvements could be made by each TAFE defining high risk and complex procurements thereby providing clear requirements for when probity plans need to be applied, and documenting the key integrity activities that underpin a tender process. Post-tender evaluations were not completed, and therefore opportunities to identify improvements in tender processes are being missed. Financial delegation arrangements existed and operated effectively, and key financial activities were guided by documented policies and procedures. Although we found this area to be generally well managed, Benefits could still be made from a review against the Better Practice Framework presented in this report. We made six recommendations. They related to financial report preparation processes, development of a more appropriate performance reporting framework, including the need for comparative information, and appropriate oversight of the performance reporting arrangements by DEECD. The need to periodically review financial policies to address better practice framework guidelines was also noted. DEECD have accepted all the recommendations. Related audits include universities, results of the 2013 audits, tabled in May 2014, and the report Tertiary Education and Other Entities, results of the 2012 audits, which includes results from the TAFE sector and was tabled in May 2013. All our reports are available on our website. If you have any questions about this or other reports, or if you have anything else you would like to discuss with us, including ideas about future audit topics, please call us on 03 8601 7000 or contact us via our website.